Welcome to the podcast, listeners. I'm the Sky at Night magazine's news editor, Ezzy Pearson. On the 9th of February, Mars is set to get a new inhabitant as the Emirates Mars mission arrives in orbit. The spacecraft, known as Hope, launched towards Mars back on the 19th of July 2020, and once in orbit, will spend its time examining the atmosphere that surrounds the planet. This is the first planetary mission put on by the United Arab Emirates, but it's not their last. The nation has grand plans for the Red Planet. Today, I'm talking to Hassa al Matrushi, the science lead on the Emirates Mars mission. Welcome to the podcast, Hassa. The Emirates Mars mission is due to arrive at Mars this month, but what will it be looking at when it gets there? So the Emirates Mars mission, including the whole probe, are targeting to study the atmosphere of Mars. So the whole probe would be looking into the different layers of Mars. We're looking into the lower atmosphere of Mars to understand the climate and the different constituents and how they vary in daily basis and even sub-seasonally. And then we would be looking at the upper atmosphere of Mars, specifically into two different layers, like the thermosphere of Mars, where we would be looking into the carbon uh, monoxide and oxygen, and then the exosphere of Mars, which is the upper layer of the upper atmosphere, where we would be looking into the hydrogen and oxygen. And specifically, like the escape of of them as like uh, we've noticed that they've been escaping Mars and the atmosphere of Mars is thin. So we would like to understand like if there is a connection between the layers, how the processes are interacted together. If there are like changes in the lower atmosphere, how that impacts the upper atmosphere. And even if there are events like dust storms happening out there, like how does the processes like work together? Um, What are the scientific goals of the mission? So um, the Emirates Mars mission has three scientific objectives. The first objective is to characterize the lower atmosphere of Mars. The second objective is about correlating the climate of uh, of Mars, like the conditions and changes that happen in the lower atmosphere, to correlate it with the escape of hydrogen and oxygen in the upper atmosphere. And then the third objective is about characterizing the exosphere of Mars. Could you just quickly explain what the exosphere of Mars is? The exosphere of Mars is the upper layer um, of the atmosphere. Like it ranges from uh, two, uh, the upper atmosphere is 200 kilometers and above. So this is the place where hydrogen and oxygen are escaping Mars. So that's why like, it's very interesting because this is the topper layer and we're looking into the escape of the water components. So we'd like to understand why they are escaping, what's the rate of escape and what's, what are like the different factors that are happening in the atmosphere that may make the escape increase or decrease over the seasons. And why is it important to study these things? What can they tell us about Mars and its history? So when we look at Mars right now, like it's a bare land. However, like it has a lot of surface evidence that Mars had water before. Like there are traces of river, like there are like uh, the rocks that they are there, like indicates that there might have been an ocean out there. And it, it indicates that Mars have had the potential of a thick atmosphere compared to the thin atmosphere like it had right now. Like we're talking about four billion years ago. So like we would like to understand the transition, like what happened to Mars, like why, like it it was a planet very similar to Earth, like it had a thick atmosphere, it has the right environment to sustain liquid water on the surface. But right now it doesn't have all these kind of conditions. So like we would like to understand the transition like that happened to the planet. And that's why like understanding the escape is one of the most important processes that scientists believe that it might have uh, been a key role into the transition of Mars. Over the last 50 years, a lot of probes have gone to Mars and several of those have been looking at its atmosphere. What is it about hope that makes it different? That's a very good question because um, like looking at the instrumentation suit, one might think that we're doing something repetitive, but it's not. Like one of the key things that the United Arab Emirates wanted to do is bring novel science to the science community. So before we even set our objectives, we went to the community to understand the needs and what uh, are like the the type of data that is needed to complement the science that is already existing. So one of the things that is very unique about this mission is it will give us information, uh, urinal information about the Martian atmosphere. So previously before, like we had missions which look at the atmosphere at specific times, 
So for example, at 2 a.m., 2 p.m. So we don't have like the comprehensive understanding at every hour what happens in the Martian atmosphere. So there are like missing links and information in there. And then the second thing, if we were able like to look at it in a neural value, we don't have like the big view global information. So we might understand a specific place on Mars, but not globally how it behaves. So that's what makes the mission unique. It will give us like a comprehensive um a complete picture of the Martian atmosphere, like covering it durally, subseasonally for a whole Martian year. You've talked a lot about what you're looking at, but how are you going to look at it? What are the, the instruments on board HOPE? The HOPE probe have three scientific instruments. So we have like the first one, Emirates Exploration Imager, like it's EXI. So it's a camera, 12 megapixel. Uh, EXI would be able to give us like colorful images of Mars. So it has like a red, green and blue bands, but it has even like three UV bands, which would be able like to give us information about water, ice and ozone. And then we have like the second one, which is Emirates Mars Infrared Spectrometer. We call it EMERS. This is an infrared spectrometer. It will give us information about atmospheric temperature, surface temperature, the dust distribution, like the, uh, the water ice, the water vapor as well in the Martian lower atmosphere specifically. And then we have the third instrument, which is Emirates Mars Ultraviolet Spectrometer, EMUS. EMUS is an instrument that will look at the upper atmosphere like the thermosphere and exosphere of Mars. So it will give us information about carbon monoxide, uh, oxygen, and even hydrogen. One of the big questions that always gets asked anytime something's happening at Mars is, will this help us look for life? Will the Emirates Mars mission help to answer any of those questions that we have surrounding life, past or present on Mars? So the objectives of the Emirates Mars mission and the data that we will get from the Hope Probe will give us a lot of information about the Martian atmosphere, the present Martian atmosphere, how it behaves, um, the water circulation in there, like uh, how it reacts to the different events. This will ultimately help add on our understanding to Mars as a whole planet. And we cannot like take every science as independently, like all the sciences play together to give us understanding of Mars as a planet and its habitability and whether like um, Mars connected before like to have like a supportive environment that can have like um, uh, like life in there or not. This is the Emirates' first really big planetary mission. Why did you choose to make the leap and go straight for Mars? That's very true. So it's Emirates Mars mission is the first planetary mission that UAE had undertaken. Uh, previously, we had a lot of Earth uh, satellites orbiting Mars, and we have like developed the capability to do that. But we like to like we have like different programmatic objective, and this is why we're going to Mars. Like there are scientific reasons. And then we have like programmatic objectives. If we're talking about programmatic objectives, why the UAE government set a Mars mission? Then we have like four, like three key ones. Like one, we would like to develop the science and technology sector in the United Arab Emirates. So missions in general, like space missions, do accelerate like the development of these two sectors like very rapidly. And then we have like the second one, which is developing Emirati scientific capabilities. So like within the missions that we had before, like a lot of engineering capabilities were developed, but we wanted to develop further the Emirati scientific capabilities. So a scientific mission was more fitting to do this job. And then the third thing is we would like to increase like the Emirates contribution to the global science community in the space uh, and the field of planetary science. So that was like the programmatic objective why the mission was set to be. And then as a destination of planet Mars from a scientific perspective like mars as i uh, as i've mentioned like four billion years ago it looked like earth it had a very thick atmosphere it had like water flowing in there so it's very close to earth and it looks very similar so understanding the changes in the transition of mars from four billion years ago to now would give us a lot of information and maybe teach us about earth itself as a planet because we're all in the same solar system. So information about our neighboring planets will help us understand our own planet as well. Now, I understand that the UAE has some pretty impressive plans for Mars. So what are your long-term goals with this mission? 
So United Arab Emirates had set a vision, Mars 2117. It was announced like in 2017. It was a hundred year program looking into settlement of Mars. So this shows like the Emirates dedication into um, developing capabilities when it comes like to planetary exploration and to uh, looking at Mars as a long-term goal. And there are like, this is a hundred year plan when it was announced in 2017, but it was a, a very realistic plan and it takes a lot of steps to reach in there. So the Emirates Mars mission is just the first step in there, but a lot of projects will come in to develop the technology side to how we can achieve such visions, and then the scientific side. And then there will be a lot of outreach as well, like how to inspire the students to go more into science and technology, how to develop their capabilities, how to provide research opportunities um, uh, when it comes like to engaging the community in such sciences so we're able to reach this goal. It certainly sounds like the UAE as a nation is getting really heavily invested in this mission. But what is it that you personally are, are looking forward to with this mission, be it something that's happening at home or something on Mars? The name of the probe, Hope, is just a very much inspiration to everyone because this is what the mission is all about, is about inspiring youth, like showing them like a small country like the United Arab Emirates, like attempting to do a huge mission, which is currently doing and is very successful as it is. So, this is the kind of um, like uh, spirit that we would like to put into use, like dream big. And if you have a goal which is clear in front of you and then you have the right approach and implementation into it, then you can attain your goals. That is what is most inspiring about this mission. Like I've, I've been engaged a lot with the community and outreach activities with school students, university students, researchers in there. And... Like I take this goal like very close to my heart about bringing them closer to science because we want more scientists in the field, more technology, and this is how we get innovation uh, going on and being like part of the global community, like uh, contributing to them actively and providing like novel data that can be of the benefit of humanity. I think that's a lovely sentiment to end on. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today, Hassa. And we all are very much looking forward to seeing what Hope has to offer in the future. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. If you want to find out what view Hope might have of Mars, be sure to pick up the February 2021 issue of BBC Sky at Night magazine, where we take a look at what the skies over Mars might actually look like. And be sure to subscribe to keep up with our latest news, where we'll be giving you the latest from the mission. Mm-hmm.